Hello, YouTube! Now tell me if you've had this problem. You're making a game and you're playtesting a feature when, all of a sudden, something inexplicable happens. And you've not the faintest clue how you did it, let alone how you're going to fix it. It... it just... It only happens like once every 50 times or so, and it just really bothers you. You could just leave it alone, but I, I mean, come on now, it, it sucks. Now, you could use a breakpoint, but it's kind of hard to play the game while it's, you know, frozen. And even if you could, how would you know to stop and look through the game when it's about to happen again? You could try doing a breakpoint every time the bugged feature is done indiscriminately, but you'd have to slowly walk through tons of normal attempts before getting to the one attempt where it happens again, if you even do. Wouldn't it be nice to just record the gameplay when the weird thing happens, and then, you know, just run through that with a breakpoint? Well, that's exactly what I've done for Dreamscape. Observe! This is the input debug system. What it does is it acts as a bridge between the player character script and Godot's built-in input system. In recording mode, or if turned off for whatever reason, it acts just like input, providing methods like isActionPress and isActionJustReleased, which actually just link directly to input anyway. However, it is also recording these actions. Every time there is a change in input, it appends two entries to this array. First, the amount of time and frames that has passed since any input has been changed, and second, what input was just changed to what. Put that all together, and you have a perfect frame-by-frame -frame recreation of every input that has been pressed or released, and when. Wait this long, change this input, wait this long, change that input, and so on and so forth. And then, if I press a certain button, in this case it is V, it will save that array to file. Then, set it to playback mode, and instead of linking to Godot's input system, it will instead use the data saved to file to recreate what inputs had been being received. This system has been extremely useful for debugging not just a player character, but anything that reacts to her as well. I've used it to debug and quickly fix some very bizarre problems, and the game is better and smoother for it. However, there is a major caveat. Two, in fact. First, of course, we have random numbers. These numbers are... Random. Because they refresh every time you hit F5, they can really mess with a system like this. Thankfully, Godot has a ran from seed function. Any given integer put into this function will always return the same randomized output. So, with a little mathematical trickery, I was able to create these global autoload functions to replace Godot's usual methods. Anyway, the next problem we have to talk about is a little more difficult to solve. You see, there are two different ways Godot games, and really most games nowadays, render and process logic. One of them is physics. This tries to run at an exact fixed rate no matter what. Usually this rate is 60 times a second. This is generally where you'd want to put things relating to mechanics like, well, physics. The other one, however, is idle. This one simply goes as fast as it can, and it's very inconsistent. You might get 120 frames in one second, then 30 in the next, then just one, then 120 again. It just gives you frames whenever it can. And to fill in the gap in between these frames, it uses something called delta. That is, the time surpassed between frames. So no matter how much lag there is, everything in the game can still move at the same speed anyway. Just maybe with a few jitters and pauses every once in a while. This was something that games didn't use to do so often. Notice how, in this footage of Sonic and Knuckles 3, the entire game slows down when it has to process all of those rings. Now here's the problem. Because idle processing is inconsistent, it's non-deterministic, meaning it can produce slightly different results each time you run the game. Thus, it totally breaks the input playback system I've created. It may as well be extra RNG itself. Case in point, this boss fight, which I've shown footage of here and on Blue Sky, it relies heavily on animation players, a class in Godot which, well, handles animations. It's a very useful system for creating fluid movements without having to use code, but it does default to using idle instead of physics. 
So then, if I try to play back a recording where animation players are heavily involved and they're still set to idle, this can happen. Thankfully, I can solve the issue by going under the callback mode in the animation player settings and changing the process mode to physics. But process modes are still something to consider before making a system like this. Overall, despite the caveats, this system has been a tremendous help, and it was incredibly satisfying to create and see come together. Now, anytime something weird happens, all I have to do is hit V, and I can find out exactly what's happening. Most of the time. However, it will work far better in a simple, completely deterministic platformer like this than it would in, say, a fast-paced first-person shooter which has to deal with smooth yet precise camera and mouse controls, or a game which relies heavily on online systems, or any game in general which has to rely on idle processes and delta calculations for its mechanics. It's pretty rare for me, as my games usually have pretty deterministic mechanics, at least I hope so, but I've used delta and idle processing occasionally. There's even a little bit of it in Dreamscape, actually. Now then, I think I should wrap this up for now. This has been way too long of a video, to be honest, and I would hesitate to call myself an expert here. In fact, I must confess I am simplifying things just a little. For instance, physics processing can also use Delta like idle. Physics and idle are actually somewhat abstract concepts, but you know, that's a topic for a different video from someone else who is smarter than me. Well then, I've been Thomas Grapham. You can find me here on YouTube or on Blue Sky as ChaosSkated1024. I've also got an itch.io and a Bandcamp where I post my finished works. And please, have yourself an exceptionally lovely day. Bye-bye!